Hi everybody, Peter Greenberg here. A lot of you have been asking me about what's going on with the search and rescue operation off the coast of Nova Scotia for the missing submarine. Ironically, I was on another deep sea submersible just about two weeks ago. We dove to the bottom of Lake Huron. That sub was only capable of going down to like 1,300 feet. We never went that far. This sub was heading for 13,000 feet. The other difference between my sub and this sub, my sub was classified and certified as safe by the Coast Guard to take passengers. This sub was only classified as an experimental vehicle. No safety inspections had been done. No criteria had been complied with. That's one of the issues here. But each sub was equipped with something similar. If we lost contact with the surface, it automatically triggered an auto surface mechanism that would get the sub back to the surface. That could have happened in my sub. It did not happen in this sub, which means they either had a power failure, a fire on board, of major toxicity and they couldn't get their oxygen regulators on, there's your problem. And of course, they had no way to signal to the surface their exact location by launching a buoy. So it's like finding a needle in the haystack, in many cases, in this case, even finding the haystack. The other thing compounding this problem, the closest rescue deep sea submersible capable of diving even deeper than this sub is still two days away and the oxygen will run out way before that. I'll stay on top of it and I'll keep you informed.